Welcome to the Harper Classroom, series of instructional videos. I'm Dr. Harper. This video is on statistics, Bayesian analysis with Excel. Let's start with historical information where we have 1,000 subjects that were given a test to test for disease. And the test has two outcomes, positive or negative. The subject could either have the disease or not have the disease. And this is the distribution of the frequency. We sum every row. So out of 1,000 subjects, 400 had the disease and 600 did not have the disease. And 500 had a positive test and 500 had a negative test. So this is the frequency distribution. We can divide through by 1,000 and come up with table 2, which is our table of probabilities. And I selected 1,000 so that we can actually see that these probabilities then would be 0 0.32, 0 0.08, 0 0.18, and 0.42 the row sum then become the probability that a subject selected at random would either have the disease of 0.4 or not have the disease of 0.6. So the probabilities in the center here are called joint probabilities and they will be represented with the expression P probability of the D and T together. These are referred to as marginal probabilities where this is the probability of D that we have the disease and the probability of T that the subject has either a positive or negative test. So the third type of probability are conditional probabilities and they're the combination of the joint and marginals where the joint probabilities are divided by the marginal probabilities. Well there's two types. We can have probability of T conditioned on D or T given D and if, if it's conditioned on D, we divide through by the marginal probability. And we can see here that we have the joint probability divided by the marginal probability. The second is the D given T. And we have the joint probability divided by T, probability of T. Let's start with this probability. So we divide through by the row sums here. And uh, so 0.32 divided by 0.4 is 0.8. Well, the same calculation can be done with these two numbers to get 0.2, these two numbers to get 0.3, and these two numbers to get 0.7. I, I also want to point out that the same four numbers can be calculated by using the frequencies instead of the probabilities. These four probabilities then indicate the historical performance of the test when the subject has the disease or does not have the disease. These two probabilities indicate a correct test result. So when the subject has the disease, a correct test result is positive, which will happen 80% of the time, and that's called sensitivity. So the test is 80% sensitive in detecting the disease when it exists. But when the subject does not have the disease, a correct test result is negative, and that'll happen 70% of the time, and that's referred to as specificity. So the test has a 70% specificity that the disease does not exist. These two probabilities indicate an incorrect test result. So when the subject has the disease, an incorrect test result will be negative, which is a false negative, which will happen 20% of the time. If the subject does not have the disease, a positive test result will be a false positive, which will happen 30% of the time. These four probabilities indicate the historical performance of the test, and they'll be used to determine and to interpret the results of the test. Also notice that each row will sum to 1, because each row represents a probability distribution. So now, let's look at the second conditional probability, the probability of D given T. Here we divide by the marginal P of T. We divide by the column sum. And so this first number, 0.64, would be 0.32 divided by 0.5. These two numbers would be used to determine 0.36. These two numbers for 0.16. And these two for 0.84. Also, these four numbers can also be determined using the historical information and the frequency tables. These four probabilities indicate the future predictability of a disease given a test result. 
These two probabilities indicate the probability of a correct test result. Given a positive test result, that will indicate a disease with a probability of 0.64. Given a negative test result, that will indicate that the subject does not have the disease with a probability of 0.84. These two probabilities indicate the probability of an incorrect test result. So with a positive test result, the probability that the subject does not have the disease is 0.36. And for a negative test result, the probability that the subject does have the disease is 0.16. So these four probabilities, which indicate the future predictability of the disease, is used in the diagnosis. So now we have the historical performance of the test given the disease and the future predictability of the disease given the test. But now consider the marginal probability or the probability of the disease. This is the probability that a subject has a disease or does not have the disease before the test. And this is the probability that a subject has a disease or does not have the disease after the test. So we will call these prior probabilities because this is the probability of the disease prior to the test. And we'll call these posterior probabilities because these are the probabilities of the disease posterior to the test. But the relationship between these two will involve the joint probabilities in these equations and the marginal probabilities of the disease in the test. Now all these probabilities will be collected in a table, in a template, so that we can see the concept, we can see the relationships, we can see the process of calculating these numbers. And I will call this table a Bayesian table. So over here we have the prior probabilities, here are the conditional probabilities, which are the historical performance, and these two sets of probabilities are given. But then from this, we determine the joint probabilities. And the way we do that is we multiply the prior probabilities times the conditional probabilities. And I give the equation up here. So 0.4 times 0.8 will be 0 0.32. 0 0.4 times 0 0.2 is 0 0.08. 0 0.6 times 0.3 is 0.18 and 0 0.6 times 0 0.7 is 0 0.42. But then we sum the probabilities to get the marginal probabilities, and those are the marginal probabilities of the test. And finally, the posterior probabilities, we take the joint probabilities and divide by the marginal probabilities. 0.32 divided by 0.5 is 0.64. Likewise, 0 0.8 divided by 0.5 is 0.16. 0.18 over 0.5 is 0.36, and 0.42 over 0.5 is 0.84. Notice that these will sum to 1, which indicates a probability distribution, but also these sum to 1 and these sum to 1, all four of these sum to 1, these sum to 1, these sum to 1, and these sum to 1. So each one of these represent a probability distribution. But also in this table, we have information about our metrics on our historical performance of our false negative sensitivity, false positive and specificity, but also the probability of our test results. So now that we have this table in a structured fashion, now we can ask questions. Question number one, what is the probability a subject has a disease after the subject receives a positive test result? Before the test, a subject selected at random will have a probability of 0.4 of having the disease, which is our prior probability. But after the test, with a positive test result, the posterior probability is 0.64 of having the disease. So we can see with a positive test result, the probability of having the disease will increase and the probability of not having the disease will decrease. With a negative test result, it's just the opposite. It would, in, it would decrease the probability of having the disease and it will increase the probability of not having the disease. So now that we have this structure and this relationship, now we can ask other questions. If 0.64 is not high enough, maybe we want to administer the test a second time. So the first time with a positive result, our probability of our disease is 0.64 and 0.36. But if we administer the test a second time, then the 0.4 6, 4, and 0.36 then, then become our prior probabilities for a second test administration. So then if 0.64 and 0.36 are our prior probabilities, 
Then we multiply to get our joint probabilities. We sum to get our marginals. We divide through, and we have new posterior probabilities. So now with two positive test results, it went from 0.4 to 0.64 for the first test, and then 0.8285 for the second test. But notice, if we had a positive test for the first test, and a negative result for the second test, it go, drops down to 0.33, not down to 0.4. So it doesn't go right back down to point 0.4 where it was before. The positive and negative test results are passed through our performances. So now let's see how to solve this in Excel. I've typed in the headings and the frequency data in Table 1. So let's start with the sums. We sum the row. And then copy that down. And then we sum the column. And copy that over. And then we sum the entire table to get the total sum. And then in table 2, we want the probabilities. So that's going to equal 320 divided by the total to get a probability. So I'm going to come up here and freeze E5 with F4, and the dollar sign will freeze that. And then I can copy this over and copy this down. And there's my probabilities. Now table 3 is I'm going to take my value divided by the row sum. And here is going to be that value divided by the row sum. But then, and that will be that value divided by itself to be complete. And then we can just copy that down. And here we have the column sum. So this will equal that value divided by the column sum, equal that value divided by the column sum. And then finally, it'll be that divided by itself, again, to be complete. And then I can copy this over. And notice over here I use the frequencies, and over here I use the probabilities. They'll both give you the same values. Our prior probabilities in our Bayesian table will equal 0.4, and I can copy that down. And then our conditional probability is 0.8. I can copy that down and then copy that over. Now our joint probabilities are going to equal 0.4 times 0.8 and then 0.4 times 0.2 and then I can copy that down. And here my marginal probabilities will be the sum of the joint probabilities. I can copy that over. And then my posterior probabilities equal 0.32 divided by 0.5 and 0.18 divided by 0.5. Then I can copy that over. And so there's my Bayesian table, number one. Now, if I want to have a second test, then I'll take these probabilities, which are the posterior probabilities of the first test, copy them, and paste them up here, the values, and then I have my new probabilities. So I can just keep doing this over and over again. So now, let's go a little bit deeper. The posterior probabilities apply to the patient and not the population. So if the patient is determined to actually have the disease after the positive test, the joint information can be updated in the database, resulting in updated test performance metrics. So if we had a positive test result and the patient did have the disease, then the 320 then would become 321 in the actual frequency table. And then that would change our probabilities, our joint probabilities and marginal probabilities. In our, table, in our second table. 
then that in turn would change our historical performance and future predictability tables. And then we have a new Bayesian table. Or if the patient is determined to actually not have the disease after a positive test, again, the joint information can be updated in the database, resulting in updated test performance metrics. Instead of 180, now this becomes 181. That changes the joint probabilities and marginal probabilities, and that changes the historical performance, future predictability probabilities, and we have a new Bayesian table. This can be expanded to more than just two levels. Question three, what is the Bayesian analysis for a test for cancer with four grades, one, two, three, and four? Well, our prior distribution has four levels. Our conditional probabilities distribution has four different distributions. Our joint is a four by four distribution, our marginal, and then our posterior distributions. Again, each one of these will sum to one because each one of these represent a probability distribution. Well, we can have more than just four levels. We can have five levels and six levels. And more levels, and even more levels with multiple tests, are easy to calculate in Excel. And we can even have a continuous distribution in each one of these distributions. Question four. What is the Bayesian analysis for continuous probability distributions? Well, to generalize, we have a prior, which, which can be represented with a continuous function, f1. We have a conditional, f2, of y given x. And then we have our joint probabilities, which is the multiplication of those two. And then our marginal probability distribution, which is the sum, which is the integral. And then finally, our posterior, which is the ratio of our joint distribution to our marginal distribution. Now the posteriors here are often expressed in terms of F1 and F2, where F1 is the prior and F2 is the conditional. And this equation is an expression of what is called Bayes' law. In a Bayesian analysis, posteriors are determined from priors and conditionals with different probability distributions, appropriate for whatever the application is. Well, this ends an introduction to the concepts underlying statistics, Bayesian analysis with Excel. I'm Dr. Harper. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.